Hi, welcome uh, to this video. We're going to develop uh, the um, chapter 36, Six Debates Over Macroeconomic Policy. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So, under these uh, six questions that we're going to have some pros and cons, basically it like the summarize all of all 35 chapters before. They provide open questions, but they are provided more for uh, public uh, makers or policy makers in general. And actually it's a great debate, a uh, current great debate, because there is not black or white answer. It depends. And actually it's like a lot of questions in economics. It depends should be the best answer. So then with the tools that we have already learned throughout these 35, uh, 35 chapters, you will understand why sometimes you can see that it's a pro or it's a cons to these, uh, to these questions. The first uh, debate question is, should monetary and fiscal policymakers try to stabilize the economy? Well, actually we know that these policymakers, they can make change in the aggregate demand throughout monetary policy and fiscal policy. Sometimes it could be better to leave the situation as well. Actually, it's a quotation it comes from from the French. It says laissez passer, laissez faire, laissez faire, laissez passer, which is like leave, uh, leave uh, and let it be, something like that. So then it could be like these uh, these two situations. In the pro sides, uh, well, actually, uh, you have that when you w w w there is no reason that we need to solve for a, a lot of fluctuations in the economy. So actually, with these policies, they maybe we can uh, get by or we can cope in those in, in like some way these effects for the business uh, cycles, and actually in some way we can even stabilize production. So then the periods of recessions or depressions could be lower, it could be less suffering than the than the other ones. However, in the cons part, we have that the policy takes time to impact the economy. Actually, some studies, they say that around six months uh, it takes in order to apply these policies or, or, or have effect into the economy. So naturally, when you start to bureaucracy process and all this, uh, all this paperwork process to uh, to put in practice uh, some policy, actually, when the when when the when it start to, to have an effect, actually, it could probably the recession is over. Second question: Should the government fight recession with spending hikes rather than tax cuts? Well, from one side we have, for example, Barack Obama uh, policy. Can actually he creates a stimulus with higher uh, higher taxes. Uh, with, with with higher taxes uh with sorry it's not taxes with higher expenditure and then george w bush uh cut taxes so two different ways well in the pro we, we can think about government expenses in the second one cut taxes well when you start as uh, so a government expenses uh, sometimes it is really useful because sometimes the monetary policy loses effectiveness we already know that when inflation is really low maybe the, the the intervention right uh interest rate maybe is not really effective so it's what we call the liquidity trap um actually the other part we have that when you proceed with the tax cut well it's not going 100 percent to the economy actually maybe you can put that money to save so to so savings so definitely this could be an issue because not all of the the, the reduction will be uh affect directly the economy uh, actually, with the macroeconomics model, estimates that there is a higher impact with uh, government spending compared with uh, tax cut. Uh, and actually, when we have this one, government expense it could be useful when we have these shower ready projects. So then we you can you can uh, create um, these public expenditure throughout infrastructure, and then for example, we can use this government expense to our federal aid to states or even to um, with the unemployment insurance. The other side of the coin says that I uh, believe that the higher spending future um, tax increase. So it means that when there is a decrease in the tax, people that people don't believe that there's going to be a, um, a like um, 
not a temporary like a fixed change so actually they think that it could be temporary so this is not going to be a real change in the aggregate demand uh, sometimes um, the some, some, sometimes the idea that, 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 that you have here is like the advantage of the centralized spending decision it means it means in that way that you put this according to the real situation of each federation if it's state and actually it could be like with the government expenditure you can create for example infrastructure as bridges as parks or other infrastructure developments that they're not going to be really used by the people in the best way however when you make some tax cut uh, enterprises people they will use the disposable money to really the money that or the the things that will provide high higher yield something like that third question should monetary policy be made by rule rather than discretion well the federal open market committee committee is in charge of the operates with discretion and the pro we have the monetary policy not by rule and by rule when we're talking about not by rule it means that there is not a, a, a target specific so there's going to be like a flexibility to take decisions and by rule sometimes it could be the, the cause there should be about abuse of power uh, so then uh, in that case you can for example uh, expand the monetary policy before uh, the, the politician period when the same party wants to continue with the with the with naturally the, the, the presidential uh, uh, job so then they use this monetary policy to believe or make believe people that the economy is going well due to the uh, the management of that party so they definitely this could be a, a an interest conflict with this uh, with this process then should the central bank aim for zero inflation well uh, we have from one side the, the, the inflation zero which should be for example all the causes that we are going to avoid with this the first one for example the show leather cost that are associated with reduced money holdings because it means that you don't need to go anytime you make a lot of withdrawals because your money is going to value less in the in the short run and actually this is not going to be this cost actually many costs associated with more frequent adjustment of prices as well is going to be avoided and then increase a variability of relative prices we have as well that unintended changes uh, in tax liabilities due to non-indexation of tax code or any confusion and inconvenience resulting from a change in unit of account the uh, other uh, last but not least we have the arbitrary redistributions of wealth associated with dollar denominated debt from the other side, the people or the academies or the policymakers that they pursue a non-inflation zero, well, uh, they say or they argue that the cost of inflation zero is really large, and the cost of reducing one percent, actually according to studies, is five times in terms of output. So it's going to be like really harm for economy and for the well-being for a country to have this uh, this policy of non uh, of inflation zero actually uh, more of most of the people that don't don't know about the real situation of inflation people associate inflation like a really bad index for economy but actually inflation is not the real problem actually it could be more about productivity about the situation of the economy and when inflation is zero actually other important situations like not possible to create negative interest rate so then this should be uh, another issue and then it, it loses uh, flexibility to the policy of the monetary policy of the market then should the government balance its budget what is the budget of the government we have from one side the income which are the taxes and then the expenditure which is uh, which is the expenditure of the government these two uh, forces it balances the budget so then in the pro it should balance the budget in the in the cons sorry in the cons it should not balance its budget so then in the in in the cons well this one well let's start with the pro better so it will provide this debt to future so then uh when we we if we don't we don't balance this budget this gap at the end of the day someone needs to pay that even uh, or now if this not is not this generation this current generation the future generation definitely will need to pay for that 
and the other part we have um, uh, that with when you have this one when you uh, close this gap you naturally the the common chain should be or the common logical chain should be that the we are going to face greater national savings with these national savings we're going to provide higher investment and as a consequence we're going to have like uh, economic growth in the part of the cones well the situation of like it depends with the, if this gap is if used for financing which kind of projects since this gap maybe is uh, financing education actually could be really harm to cut this um, this 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 budget or to balance this budget and we need to cut education for example definitely this should be a large impact should the tax laws be reformed to encourage saving well in the pro side we have here the national savings determined to provide better well-being this should be the normal so maybe maybe we can uh, use uh, change this tax or reduce this tax to provide higher disposable income for the people but other situation like sometimes for example in a dividends when you have a stock uh, the stock is already paying uh, income tax. When 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 you have like um, the income statement for a company, you have the last part, which is the the net income, and then you need to multiply by the percentage of the tax, and you need to subtract this value. So this is going to have at first time the tax, and once you re receive this money back, or, or you as investor you receive this money you need to pay as well not another tax so definitely like a double tax uh, to the firm and uh, to the individuals so then this should be a, a reform from tax this is like the the, the the pro about this the con is not like you shouldn't balance the budget the con is like leave at that well we, we or with this situation we have with people naturally with higher income they save more on uh, changing tax will get more inequality why because according to studies people with more income they they naturally they save more and people with less income they, they they save less so then when you cut the taxes actually the the ones that they're going to save really money is going to be people with the higher uh, or largest or highest income so then we need to compensate uh, or weight two effects. One, the substitution effect, which basically with higher, uh, you have, for example, higher interest rate, so you have more consumption in the future. However, you have the income effect, so less money to achieve ob objectives. So if the substitution effect higher than the income effect, definitely should be a good way uh, definitely to cut taxes when you have this higher interest rate. Well, uh, that's all. I hope you have understood better this, uh, this idea. I guess that now we can um, understand better some important questions on, on economics and actually related with politics when they talk about economy in general. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has worked. Uh, it has worked for you. And see you next video. Bye bye.